You know, we could all use some encouragement. And I've got some good news for you. Welcome to 5 Minutes with Mark. Well, greetings, friends. Welcome back to 5 Minutes with Mark. I hope you're still with me. We're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13. We're picking up at verse 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. Let's stop right there. In those days, after that tribulation, I think that's a very important thing for us to understand. Again, people say, why, why do you believe in a, a mid-tribulation rapture instead of a pre-tribulation rapture? I said, well, that's called what, pretty much what Jesus says here. That there's this period of great tribulation, such as has never been seen. And then, after that tribulation, there's this incredible event where the sun's darkened and the moon's not giving its light. The stars of heaven fall and the powers in the heavens, the heavenly places, the powers, principalities. Remember all those guys from Ephesians? We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities, spiritual host of wickedness in high places they will be shaken this moment. And there's an interesting repetition. If we go back to Zephaniah, these minor prophets, really interesting to me. Zephaniah chapter 1 at verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. Wow. That's what this day looks like. And they will gather together the elect from the four winds, from all all the places, the chosen ones, were going to be called together. But when? After the tribulation, Jesus says. And this is this sign, and, and it goes through, you can see it in Joel, you can see it in Isaiah, it, it, this moment where the sun is darkened, the moon will not give its light. There's this moment of cosmic darkness that happens. And in that moment, then, they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, which again takes us back to Daniel, where we have the vision of the Ancient of Days coming in the clouds with the angels, the host of heaven. Again, we see it in Revelation as well. I think Revelation is very clear. It's at the midpoint of this tribulation period, midpoint where this desolate person, where it all starts to culminate. It's at that point that there's a twofold harvest where there's the harvest of the elect into the heavens, and then there's the harvest of the wicked into the wine press of God's wrath. It happens about halfway through. And the end from this point is very near. So, what do we learn from this? Well, we learn that we need to take heed. Be vigilant, be aware, what's said. We need to live with our eyes open. And then there's this definite moment. I think as the birth pangs continue, remember, it's birth pangs, it's troubles that are happening. And there's, they're going to come in waves, just like a woman who's giving birth. As those labor pains grow closer and closer and in greater intensity, then the birth comes. That's what we're going to experience as we reach the culmination of all things. That's what Jesus is telling Peter and James and John and Andrew on the Mount of Olives, looking across the valley at the temple of God. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. When? 
Well, in those days after the tribulation, when the sun is darkened and the moon won't give its light, there's smoke and gloom. It's great war and devastation. The stars of heaven are going to fall. The powers in heaven will be shaken. And then he sends his angels to gather together his elect, his chosen ones, from the four winds, the farthest parts of the earth, the farthest parts of heaven. This is the resurrection of the dead. This is the great moment where the dead in Christ shall rise and those who remain will be quickly changed, gathered up together with them. And will forever be with the Lord. I want to be as encouraging as I can. Are we at the doorstep of this happening? We could be. There are a lot of things that I think point that way. I certainly feel in my spirit that we are entering into a time of turmoil and tribulation. I think we're in a time of turmoil and tribulation and that it's only going to get progressively more difficult. I think the only way that we're going to survive this is by faith and dependency on Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us, who has promised if we seek him and his kingdom, he will take care of our immediate needs. You won't be hungry. You won't be naked. You won't sleep under a bridge in a box. He will take care of your essential needs if you will have faith in him. And we have to have faith in him. We have to continue to love one another and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, take care of those that God puts into our realm so that they may hear the gospel and endure to the end and be saved. Is it all about to come to a final conclusion? Maybe. And we have to live as if it is. And if we believe that it could be, then we have to take our eyes off of the world and the things of this world and put them on the things of the kingdom, living, not striving for the things of man, not building another temple for Herod, not trusting in the thousands we put in the coffers, but living like the widow with her two mites, living with the expectation that the disciples now have of being arrested, beaten, and killed for the gospel's sake. That is how we have to live our lives today. But remember, this is not it, folks. There is an eternal home waiting for us. And I promise you, he who endures will not only be saved, but be rewarded in heaven when you hear our Father say, well done, good and faithful servant. That has to be our motivation beyond everything else. And that makes it all worthwhile. No matter what, we have to go through. See you next time. Hey friends, I sure hope you're enjoying this casual stroll through the Gospel of Mark. And if you'd like to know more about me and what I'm doing, check out my website, theeclecticmonk.com. There you'll find all kind of other stuff that I've been doing. And I really hope that you'll share this Bible study with the people around you. Till next time, God bless you.